Mike, it's great to come to uh, the Hagley Road in Birmingham and talk to you about your role. Um, you were the head of pathology for the Royal Free for years and then you retired. What brings you now as a professional lead uh, in healthcare sciences school in Birmingham? Well, I, I was at the Royal Free for 30 years, but it was the right time to leave, the right time to retire. Okay. Or at least I thought it was the right time to retire. And then I was coerced into taking on this part-time job at the National School of Healthcare Science in Birmingham. So I now commute from Wimbledon to Birmingham. So can you summarise your role as a professional lead? Well, it, it ties into what the school's role and responsibilities are, and, and that is to provide uh, overs oversight and support for the Modernising Scientific Careers programme. And so as professional lead, what I do is um, sort of uh, provide that, that, that sort of degree of overarching cohesion to bring things together to make sure that things okay. actually work work well. And do you get involved in the day-to-day -day stuff? I mean, if there's a student in difficulties, <coughs> is, are you looking at paperwork to do with that, or is it a higher level than that? Uh, it's, it's both, really. I mean, yes, we have oversight and we provide professional advice because I'm just one of a number of different okay. professional leads. And how many people are there in the team? How many professional uh, There are leads eight are professional there? leads altogether, yeah, okay. covering the various specialisms. Right. And you're particularly involved with the HSST programme. First of all, can you tell us what HSST yeah, means? Yeah, acronyms. It sounds like, are you sure it's not a high-speed train? No, it's definitely not a high-speed train. Uh, High Specialist Scientist Training Programme is, is what HSST okay. stands for. And is that right across the UK? Are you involved with it in Belfast and in Modernising Science of Careers is, is, is local to England. Okay. But we do have participation from okay. Wales, Scotland and to some extent Northern Ireland as well. So are they redoing it all or are they then, just no. keeping uh, piggybacking on what you're doing really? Uh, well with Wales we're actually engaging with them okay. and they're, they're joining in our recruitment process. Right. Scotland is a little more distant and uh, sort of Northern Ireland are coming on board slowly. Okay. Um, do you ever get back into the laboratory to see the trainees? Uh, yes, because as part of our role we carry out accreditation of laboratories, so we go in, mm -hmm. we inspect uh, the laboratory to make sure it's fit as a training place, so we have a discussion with the training officers uh, okay. and with the trainees themselves. Now, I think we should take you back into the laboratory now. Oh, do I get to wear a white coat? Well, if we can find a clean coat, we'll give you a white coat. You can even wear some blue gloves as well if you like, Mike. Blue? I'd rather have green. Okay. I'm not sure. We, we might have green, we might not. Raj, have we got green? Yeah, we might, we might have green for you. Mike, we're in a satellite laboratory. We've got our white coats on. Let's start by reviewing the STP programme. Well, there are still a large number of people going through this programme, of course. In fact, there's 1,283 people okay. across the 33 specialisms going through the programme as we speak. OK, and how many in biochemistry? In clinical biochemistry, we've got 117. OK, and immunology? In immunology, there are 22. And in microbiology? And in microbiology, a few more, 43. The attrition rate is really not that great. Uh, maybe, oh, I don't know, about 2% at the most. It's, okay. it's very low. Of course, there's always been an attrition rate from every training programme. The HSST programme, the High Specialist Scientist programme, mm -hmm. is, is, is our latest programme. So we've got two years of intake into that programme, around about 120 students in that programme at the moment. Okay. Mike, I've got some questions from supervisors. Are you happy to take them? Of course. Okay, the first one's from Karen in Glasgow. And she, Karen says, do you think STP trainees that have just had two years of laboratory experience in clinical chemistry are up to the same standard that the grade A training program used to throw out? Well, of course, we're looking at a different beast altogether with the modernising scientific program. We're looking to create somebody who has a, an understanding of the multidisciplinary aspects of laboratory working, hence the year one where we have the rotations, where people move around okay. and, and don't get the, the sort of exposure to their discipline of choice until later in the course. So what are they, sell me the advantages then of the new style? So, so that we're producing a more rounded individual, more suited to the sort of service that diagnostic laboratories are, are, are sort of giving. Okay. Um, and I think, you know, if if you look at you or me as, as clinical directors, mm -hmm. as we are or were, yeah. um, then I, th I think that gives a much better advantage to okay. those students coming out of the STP program who have ambitions that way. Okay. A much greater understanding of the other disciplines. 
I guess looking back 10 years ago when I became pathology director, you're, you're right, that I had to go and learn quite a lot about the other specialties to be able to, to lead and, and take them forward. Yeah. So I ag agree with you. Um, now, Craig from Birmingham, he comments, um, isn't there a real danger that the training scheme is seen as an MSc with just a bit of lab work thrown in on the side? Well, I would hope not. Um, I mean, really, the, the experience that the trainee gets is derived from, from what the training laboratory is able to offer. Mm -hmm. And it's about having that conversation with your trainee and ensuring that, that it isn't just about the academic component, it's about learning the practical skills okay. as well. I suppose the other criticism that's thrown is that trainees spend a lot of time doing their OLAT stuff on the computer in the biochemist's office. There's obviously a need to complete the OLAT. That's that part of uh, the procedure. But the workplace-based assessments are, the, are very much that sort of okay. thing. Based okay. in the workplace, a practical evaluation of a trainee's okay. skill. Another question from Scotland. Um, how do we ensure that the MSc training programs in a particular specialty are all at the same level? Well, the, the actual curriculums themselves are uh, commissioned and independently evaluated uh, before they're, they're, they're agreed and, and rolled out. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also undergo uh, a regular annual uh, sort of check on what they're delivering to make sure that they're their, their academic component is aligned okay. with the requirements of each curriculum. Another question um, from a supervisor, OLATs rely on local marking by uh, supervisors and senior members of departments and training establishments. Um, that's seen sometimes as, as a, bit, a little bit too personal. Um, I don't know about personal, what we're dependent upon here is, is the assessors professionalism, experience, mm -hmm. background. Um, they don't necessarily have to be senior members of the department, they just know, need to have an understanding about okay. what is being assessed okay. that the trainee is doing at that time. And hopefully it will be a genuine and truthful evaluation. Okay. Now one thing I'm particularly interested in is the trying to bring together the separate entities of the MSc and the academic training and then the laboratory-based training. Um, do you see that as important to try and make sure that we're actually tr trying to bring those two things together? Of course. I mean, they dovetail together. They're both complementary. They, they both contribute to the program. Mm. And it's important that, that they, they do actually come together in some way. I, th I think many HEIs actually achieve that by engaging with healthcare professionals to come in and deliver lectures as part of the okay. HEI's sort of academic program. And how much responsibility has the supervisor got for that, or is it more at the level of the school and the university try, trying to get that to work? Uh, actually, it's about a partnership working together to ensure that the trainee is getting the best possible experience okay. going through their program. Another quite serious question. Supposing you've got a trainee that it's it's felt by the supervisor just isn't cutting the mustard and isn't going to end up as a career clinical scientist. Are there mechanisms to deal with that? Oh yes. Uh, the school has a very clear training and difficulty policy uh, and we would be intervening, we would be uh, talking to the supervisor, talking to the trainee, talking to the higher education okay. uh, as, as well. It's like conflict because the universities going to try and do everything they can to get them through that MSc? Well, it's in everybody's interest to get the trainee through the program successfully. Yeah. And that's, that's where the trainee and difficulty policy comes in, where we can sort of investigate and evaluate why the trainee isn't perhaps getting the experience that they should get okay. as part of that, that okay. comprehensive training. Mike, thanks for telling us more about the STP training program. Did you want to wear these blue gloves now? <laughs> I don't think they're going to fit my hands, Johnson. Actually, no, I think they are super small. <laughs>